G'day, everybody. I'm trying out somebody else's voice today, so um, bear with me. Um, I hope I get through this. Um, if I had done this yesterday, I wouldn't have had a voice at all, so uh, let's see if we can do this. Okay, so I'm Rod Vag. Um, as Michael said, I work at Node Source. I do open source there um, on the Technical Steering Committee um, and also on the Node Foundation Board. And my role here today is to be a bit of a cheerleader and to talk about the health of the project and you know, convince you all that Node is the right choice. Um, thankfully, diving into the details and the numbers, uh, I don't need to do any fudging or spinning because uh, all of the metrics we're collecting are, are really healthy. Things are looking really good. Um, I'm super confident about Node, um, particularly after compiling these details, even more so than this time last year. So things are going great for Node. Um, so I'm going to run through some of the reasons why um, you should think so too. So first of all, the Node Union. What are we talking about with State of the Union? Um, I'm not from America, so we don't have State of the Union speeches. So let me define this, uh, what it means to, to have a Node Union. Um, now we have the Node Foundation, uh, which is organizer of this event. And um, it's this strong coalition of, of all these companies. There's nearly 30 companies in the Node Foundation. Um, eight of them are platinum. Uh, most of those have contributed a sizable amount of money to run this foundation, to kick things off. Um, and then there's uh, 19 silver um, companies in that as well. And they participate in governance of the, um, this, this central meeting point of the, uh, of the Node ecosystem. Um, and alongside that, we also have this technical group. And uh, at the peak of the technical group are what we call the collaborators. These people have commit access to the Node repo, the, the core Node repository. And there's currently 90 people in that list. So 90 people have commit access to Node.js slash Node. Um, they're not all active, though. You'll see some faces on there that haven't been around for a little while. So in terms of active people, if we looked at just, at just the people that have made commits to Node Core in, the, in, this, in this year, um, we get down to, to 48. That number is a bit bigger when you consider the number of people that are also commenting and doing things in GitHub. Um, they're an important group. I just wasn't able to get good numbers on that to, to make this group larger. But 48 active people in that collaborator group, it's always growing. New people are being added almost every week. Um, it's a great group of people to be involved with, too. I really enjoy this. State of the core community. Um, so this is, let's focus on the community around Node Core. This is not community in the sense of being this large ecosystem. I'm talking purely about core community. Um, it's quite hard to define what you mean by community when you start getting outside of core, because Node is just so massive. Uh, but when we talk about the core community, it's a bit easier to contain and measure. So let's look at um, some proxy measurements for uh, the size and the activity and the health of that community. So I'm going to be showing a bunch of graphs and numbers um, through this talk. Most of them are not useful on their own. They're mainly proxies for um, other measurements. So when we put them all together, they give us a good picture of um, how well Node is going. And they're the kinds of things that we monitor over time to understand and improve um, and to find places where we know we can get better. So this, this graph here is comparing 2005 to 2016, the number of total contributors over time, over the whole length since 2009 when Node started. How many people have made commits that are in the, the Node repository, in the Node um, Git uh, repository? So that obviously increases over time. It's always going to increase. It's easy. The interesting thing to know about this graph, though, is that it's actually increasing at an accelerating rate. So the, 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 the gap between those two lines is increasing over time. And we can see that by breaking them down into some different metrics. The unique contributors per month. So every month, if you take a, a month, isolated month, and you count the number of unique individuals that have contributed code in that month, is increasing over time. So every node release is put together by an increasing number of people over time. Um, this is a great metric to understand how many people are collaborating around this single code base. And remember here that the node code base is not huge. We, we have this small core philosophy. It's not about you know, putting more and more things into it. It's about refining it and perfecting it. Um, and so a lot of people are collaborating on this. New people, this, you'll, you'll have heard this from a number of people um, at, at this conference, but one of the values that we set up with the Node Foundation was that we wanted to be inclusive. We wanted to be welcoming as a community. And to do that as a core community, there's a number of ways. We've heard about code and learn. 
um, and other initiatives. And, um, and you'll hopefully be hearing more from, uh, from Tracy on the next talk as well about how we can continue to do that. It's something that we focus on and we try and do better over time. And the numbers are telling us that things are going pretty good because um, in terms of, when you compare this year to last year, uh, we have twice as many per month new people contributing to the code base as 2015. That's a, a, a 200%. Um, which is an extremely um, encouraging number. You can see there the September numbers, are, there was a quite a blip there, and uh, that was, I think, largely due to the code and learn activities in Node Interactive Amsterdam. Um, so there's a lot of activity there. And um, the unique contributors month is that's 1.5 times the number um, in 2015. So um, things are looking pretty healthy, and this is accelerating. In terms of top contributors, um, shout out to these people. There's three of these people in the in the room today, I think. Um, so Rich Trot is uh, is actually at the moment by far the the most active contributor. Um, he's become a champion of our our test activity. So um, he, he's become our test expert, and uh, he's improving the state of the tests and really rallying a lot of troops behind that activity. So um, give Tr uh, Tr Rich a pat on the back when you see him. Yeah, no, I, give him a clap. Um, so Ben Nordhaus is in there, he's been a consistent contributor. Um, James Snell, who we heard of in the, from the panel as well. <laughs> Give James a clap as well. I, James is doing some great work. Um, Anna Henning, Henningsen, it's a great story. Um, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to have heard more from Anna at this, at this um, um, conference, but came in a short period of time and, and rose up easily through the ranks um, in terms of both um, commits, but also um, the, the level of authority. So Anna's one of our, one of our most respected contributors now um, in a very short period of time. So number four spot there, hand, give a hand to Anna, because um, she's here as well. And, um, Brian, Brian White, who I don't believe is here, but um, Brian's another consistent contributor on the TSC. These people are all on the, the, the Node CTC as well, um, which is a pretty common pattern. That the, the most active people, the people that are contributing a lot of code, that are, are there to help guide the project, tend to get raised up to the CTC pretty easily. Um, the interesting thing about this, though, is this is not about um, making celebrities out of coders. Um, that's not something that we're really that interested in, uh, and it's not that healthy either. But what we want to do here is, is have more of these people. And if you look at the numbers, um, the, the share of work done by those top contributors is decreasing over time, which means the long tail is actually getting fatter. So in 2016, 52% of the commits were done by the top contributors, the top 10 contributors. In this year, that number's down to 46. So, so more of the work is being done by that, that long tail. This is a great measure um, over time. I don't have a graph there, but I'm absolutely going to make one because that's something we need to measure. Let's look at the code base itself and see how that's changed over time, and uh, particularly in 2016. So a very basic measure, commits per month. And if you've ever done any um, tracking of your own code bases, you know this is not the greatest measure, but it's an, another good proxy. Um, I'll preface this by saying that Node Core is, is fairly strict about its um, idea of um, churn. So you can't just get a commit in that just shuffles things around, um, even if that might n make slightly nicer code. Um, it has to be justified. Um, so churn is not appreciated, um, but you know, we do get occasional churn with, with some things coming in over time. So it's not, a, it's not needless churn going on here. Commits are um, you know, packaged together when they're landed. So this is a very um, rigorous process here in terms of what the commits are over time. And they're increasing. So 2015 saw, uh, saw commits go in at 125% of the rate of 2015. Um, and you can see that over time. I, I was concerned there that we weren't going to um, be able to beat the IOJS levels from um, December and January 2015, which you can see the little spike in the blue line there. Um, but we're, we're, we keep on peaking up there, so um, we're going really well over time. To dig into that, though, there's some interesting, interesting um, graphs here where those commits are going. The majority of them are actually going into um, documentation. So the documentation directory, which has the API docs and a bunch of other things, um, is seeing the most activity in terms of commits. Um, and the other one is um, in the test directory, um, that area where Rich does a lot of work. Um, that's 
um, very active over time. And interestingly, the main source code of Node, the stuff in, in the source directory and the lib directory, the things that compile down into the Node binary, it's, it's actually fairly stable over time. So you're not seeing a huge amount of bloat going on there. Um, so I, I think these are really encouraging details. It's a lot of coding in those commits. 37% uh, of the JavaScript and C++ code was changed in that source in 2016. Um, that, that might sound like churn, but it's, it is absolutely not churn. Yeah, it's a pretty raw measure because Git is not great at measuring actual changes, but in terms of the lines of code, 37% were, were touched in Node Core. 58% of the code in the test directory changed. That's massive in, the, in a year for a project that's been around for so long. And 227 new unit, unit test files were added. Uh, that's a 23% increase. The, the state of testing in Node Core is doing amazing in 2016, um, we're getting a much more solid um, test framework. Uh, test coverage, now this is only a new measure we've got, thanks to Arna who contributed this one. Um, we have coverage.nodejs.org, which you can go to, it's run every night to look at our code coverage. During the year, it roughly increased from 85% to 89%. Um, so code coverage is something that we're tracking as well. It's not a great, um, it doesn't tell us that we are measuring all the way people use Node because we are consistently surprised with um, when we get reports for things that have broken or things that aren't working quite right. We're consistently surprised at the way that people are using Node. So it's a challenge for us to constantly keep up with understanding how the massive user base is applying Node and making sure we test and understand those. As you've heard, I think, um, through these last, the last two days, that's something that we're trying to do. Um, and the docs again, 90% uh, of the lines in the API documentation were changed. I think this is largely due to, the, due to the fact that the documentation is probably the easiest way to get into programming in Node. And you see this pattern a lot where somebody's first few commits is in documentation changes, and then they start leveling up as they get confident with the code base in the process. So if you're interested in getting started in Node, um, you know, there's a well-trodden well path there of starting out with documentation fixes. Um, and if you, if you have any complaints about our API, API docs, you've only got yourself to, to blame for not getting in there and fixing them. So yeah, go ahead and, and improve what we have there. Some themes for what's going on and what's, what we're focusing on or what the core team is focusing on. Um, diagnostic tools. This is something that's been a problem for Node for its whole life. And it's one of the... Um, the biggest black holes, I think, in terms of Node's feature set. And we hear it all the time that Node's hard to debug, it's hard to inspect, it's hard to understand. The asynchronous programming model and the event loop process actually makes it quite difficult to diagnose, to see where your program's at, what it's done, um, and how things are tracking over time. Um, but we're seeing a lot of work in this area. Um, we have, in version 7, you may have already heard and played with the V8 inspector protocol that allows you to attach your node process directly into Chrome um, and, and other tools. We've got other tools already building on that pro protocol. It's not Chrome specific. And you can deeply inspect and debug node while it's running using the inspector. Currently experimental, but going so well that, that it'll, the experimental um, status will probably come off soon, and that'll be an official feature. Um, and the, the old debugger may actually find itself going away because it's, it's not well maintained, and this is so much better. Async hooks, uh, which was previously known as async wrap, um, is in node 4 and 6 and 7. It's just not an official feature yet. It's, it's still tagged experimental. This is being finished up. Documentation is being worked on as we speak. Um, and this will allow people deep insight into the event loop, asynchronous activities that are happening. They're really low-level hooks, um, but they should enable an ecosystem of tools to build on top of them and do some creative things across those event boundaries. Um, V8 trace events is a, currently a pull request in core. This is hooking into the tracing um, API that comes with V8. Uh, v Chrome, in Chrome you can look at the, I think it's Chrome dot dot slash slash tracing, and there's a whole tracing thing where you can look at different categories of events that happen within the engine. Um, that's being applied to Node Core, so we can actually put custom Node style events using their API, and it ends up something that's similar to, um, you might have seen Dtrace, those sort of tools, um, but at a slightly higher level, at the, at the, the node level rather than system level. Um, so I, there's some interesting tooling going to come out of that, I think. LL Node is another great project um, started by Fedor. Um, it's a LLDB plugin that lets you use LLDB to debug 
JavaScript code, not just, not just the C++, but JavaScript, and you can expect that and, and use the low-level debugger. And Node Report's another one that's coming to the core ecosystem that allows you to um, get some diagnostic reporting about the behavior of your Node application. Um, a topic that so many people love is uh, JavaScript. Um, over time, we are we're obviously, you know, V8 is chasing the feature set, and so are we by proxy. Um, in Node version 6 and onwards, we have 97% uh, of ES6 covered, um, unflagged. You can get 99% by adding some Harmony flags. Um, wouldn't really advise that in production, though, because they're not quite ready. And um, version 7 of Node um, it boosts ES7 support up to 55%. Um, and including in that is uh, the async await, which everyone, well, not everyone, which a lot of people are keen for. Um, async await is in, is in um, that version of V8, but it's behind a flag. Um, it may be coming soon to version 7. Um, and on that topic, we're going to have increased V8 upgrades during Node's lifetime. So this is a change of policy in Node Core. Normally, we would, in the past, we've, we'd have waited for a major version to bump a major version of V8. That's to maintain stability of your add-ons. But We've decided that if we can upgrade V8 while maintain the stability of your add-on so you don't have to recompile, then we'll do it. So we have currently queued um, version 5.5 of V8 waiting to go into node version 7. Um, there's still some um, things we're discussing there, but we, we, you will see increased V8 upgrades over time, and they will happen during the lifetime of a major version. And another great topic, collaboration with TC39 is improving. Um, since we don't own a VM, we don't have a natural voice there, but we have a number of member companies and heavy node-using companies that are on TC39 that, discover, that are discovering that it's in their interest as well to advocate for node. Um, and we also have some specific node representation, including Bradley Mech, who's here as well. Um, you may have seen his talk. Um, Bradley Mech has been doing champion work on ECES modules. Um, he did a talk about that a bit earlier. And he's, he's, he's representing GoDaddy, on uh, TC39, but GoDaddy is actually sponsoring that seat so that he can advocate on behalf of Node specifically. Um, and James Snell, I think, is going to be joining uh, TC39 to, on behalf of IBM to do the same thing. So we have now no dedicated Node representation on TC39, and we will be contributing to the future of JavaScript. State of releases, how did we go with releasing? Well, we had a lot of releases in 2016. 63 different releases, and they were done by seven different people. So we have a, it's not just one person gating this thing, we actually have a crew of dedicated release managers that is authorized by the CTC. Um, and 63 releases came out across our multiple release lines that we manage. Some key ones in there I've highlighted. Um, the start of version uh, 6 happened in April. Um, the last release of version 5, uh, happened in June. So if you're still on version 5, like a lot of people are, you really need to get that off that. The last release of version 0.10 would happened uh, in October. Um, quite painful. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the switch to LTS for version 6 also happened in October. So now version 6 is one of our two main uh, LTS branches. And the start of version 7 happen also happened in October. So that's a current release. Um, and how they're being used? Well. We didn't really have an increase in the number of releases over time. So when we look at the downloads from nodejs.org, it's not an increase because there's more releases. It's an increase because there are more people downloading Node. The difference between 2015 and 2016 is 220%. So one of the metrics that we've had since the beginning of the foundation was that Node is growing at um, at the pace of increase, doubling every two every year. Sorry, two times every year. Well, the downloads are actually showing right now that it's doing 2.2 times. Um, so that's increased over last year, which is really impressive. And to break that down, to look at how people are, or what they're using, um, we can see that um, one of the most interesting things there is that version 6 um, actually overtook version 4. And you can't see it in that graph because it's their monthly aggregates. But version 6 overtook version 4 the week that it became LTS. So that was um, a few weeks ago. But now version 6 is the most downloaded version of Node, with version 6, 4 um, behind. Um, but, but they're you know, crossing over, so a lot of people are doing that migration. 
Version 012 is, is still around, but it's, it's decreasing over time at a fairly consistent rate. So we would expect to see that phase out. I think a lot of people that jumped to version 12 or 012 uh, have been fairly confident upgrading to version 4. Um, version 010 is still hanging on. It's decreasing, but at not as, a, as fast a rate as, as some of us would hope. Uh, version 010, 10, I'm calling our, our Windows XP. Um, version 010 was a really good release of Node. I mean, that was, that was a, a time when a lot of us saw Node as being ready. Um, and I, I suspect there's a lot of people in this room that felt the same way, that it got to this point where it was something that you can use seriously. People were taking Node seriously. The code base was fantastic. Contribution levels were awesome. Um, everything was maturing. 010 was a fantastic release. And um, people continue to think that. Unfortunately, um, a solid upgrade failed to materialize for a long time. In the case of Windows XP, we can sort of write off Windows ME as, you know, people held off. Um, and it was a long time coming before people had a confident upgrade. Windows zero, sorry, Windows, Node zero 010, um, it had to wait three years, really, until we had solid alternatives. Um, and so it got entrenched. And then when we got those alternatives um, in the form of zero 012, and um, you know, there was some problems with 012. A lot of people opted not to adopt it. And version 4, in particular, was quite a big jump for a lot of people. Um, so it wasn't as smooth um, as a lot of people would like in upgrading. So it's been difficult. So 010 is still around. It is not officially supported. We cannot continue to support 010 anymore, um, the, particularly the version of OpenSSL is too old. And we have to draw a line somewhere. So to look at those lines. Um, is our release plan. Um, you'll notice that 010 is not on there anymore. It finished um, in October, so it's, it's dropped off the list. There will be no more releases for 010 officially from the project. You're welcome to take the code base and patch it in any way you'd like um, and use it. There's, there's no problem with doing that. 012 is going to, in, at the end of this year, um, it, the support is going to cease. And one of the important points there is that OpenSSL version 101, which is in both Node 010 and Node 012, is also ceasing support. So not only will you get no support from the, from the official Node project, but you don't even get OpenSSL support. Um, so you just, it's just it's not a good idea to be on those branches um, as time goes on. Um, version 5 ended long ago, um, if you didn't get the memo. Um, a lot of people still downloading it. These odd release numbers are only supported for um, six months, and then they get an extra two months of maintenance where we will still release um, patches for them. Um, so in June this year, version 5 stopped being supported. Um, version 7 is on the way out as well. It's only got seven months to live, and then it will no longer be supported. So um, those, those odd numbers are not where you want to be. Where you want to be, if you want stability, I don't know, actually, if you, if you want to have the latest and the greatest and participate in the active development of Node, version 7 is great. It's a great choice. It's solid. We are confident in every release we put out. But if you're, if you're in a particularly large company and you, you value stability over everything, the LTS branches are where you want to be. Um, and you can see here we've got two of them at the moment. And they're both in active LTS, so we're actively doing releases and putting commits into them. Um, uh, we have Argon, version 6, and Boron, which is now version Sorry, Argon's version 4, Boron's version 6. Um, and soon we will, uh, version, Node version 8 will come out and turn into LTS after six months. And uh, it will have a code name starting with C. Um, so stay tuned for that one. Um, and you'll see that there's a, quite a large overlap window between those. So you actually have a lot of latitude to plan your migration strategies. If you are using Node in a large environment, you need to ha have a migration strategy. You need to know when you're going to start and finish your migration between these versions so you don't get stuck. Thankfully, the delta between each of them is actually fairly small. Going from version 4 to version 6 is fairly painless. Very few um, deployments are going to experience pain there. Most of them will actually experience joy. Um, so quickly, um, I think my time's up, but I'll uh, quickly run through state of the build. Um, this is one of my favorite areas, because uh, I do a lot of work here. Um, our build resources, are we're really proud of this, um, and, and for good reason. Um, we have donated resources from these companies that I've got listed here, particularly DigitalOcean and Rackspace, who have been with us from the beginning, donating resources. We don't pay for these things, but they give us sizable donations. Um, and we continue to thank them, because we use a lot of their resources for our testing and release infrastructure. Um, following up close behind that, uh, Microsoft, um, Azure, Joyent, 
Um, particularly after the acquisition of Samsung, have really stepped up their contributions to Node. It's been fantastic. Um, and IBM as well are increasing their um, contributions. And another number of other companies contribute in other ways as well. Um, we have an ARM cluster. And this is, a, this is a large chunk of our ARM cluster. It's, cl cluster. it's in one place because these things are hard to come by in terms of infrastructure as a service. So you can see here we've got banks of different versions of Raspberry Pis. We've got some other different ARM devices, including um, some ARM version 8, ARM64 machines on the, on the end there. Um, we've got some other ARM resources that are located elsewhere, but this one's, um, we rerun this from one location. And uh, a lot of those resources you just saw there are contributed by individuals. We've had a few companies in this list, but mostly we do these donation drives and we've had individuals contribute. And I, I, I was counting before the, the presentation, I think there are seven people on this list who are here with us. Uh, if, if you donated and you're on this list, do you want to put your hand up? Yeah, there's a few people there. Give them a clap. I, I'm, I'm so happy about this. Um, and so we, they've actually got their names little on a little sticker on each of these nodes, and they're also identified in our cluster, so you can see whose machine you're running on. Um, it's, so it's a big cluster. It's configured to run, uh, to test Node, LibUV, V8, and also do smoke testing using Sitcom, um, which you might have heard from Miles. Um, there's 141 different build, test, and release nodes connected full-time to this cluster. We have 25 different operating systems and versions of those operating systems. Not everything that we... Uh, that Node runs on is supported here, but it's expanding over time. Eight different architectures are represented here and across 10 different hosting providers. Um, they're highly parallelized for some of the um, slower platforms that we test on, particularly ARM. When you run a, a test suite in Node, it runs across six Raspberry Pis at a time for those three different generations of Raspberry Pi, so we can get them done quicker. Every commit is fully tested. Nothing goes into core unless it's been fully tested. Every release is fully smoke tested across a batch of ecosystem um, libraries from NPM. Just quickly now, last topic here, state of security. Um, our security processes are firming up over time and we expect these to be more rig rigorous with the formation of a new security working group. Um, we receive reports to this email address, security at node.js.org. That's where we try and funnel all of our reports to. If you have something you think is a security bug in Node, that's where you need to send it. Um, it's also the only email address on the website, I think, so we get some interesting emails there as well. Um, there's a private group, including CTC and, again, some, and a number of other domain experts who review a lot of these things, come up with fixes or policy regarding them, and then do something about it. We provide as much notice as we can via the Node.js.org website, via the blog there, and also a Node.js sec mailing list, which you should be subscribed to if you want to be notified of releases, uh, of security releases. Once we put out releases, we do full disc disclosure. We don't hold anything back. Release comes out with disclosure of what's, what's going on so that you can make a full analysis. Um, LTS release lines only receive minimum changes. So uh, if you're, say, on um, node version 4.6.0, um, we had a security release come out of there. We didn't add anything else but those fixes for security. So you have maximum assurance that your platform is going to be stable and you can upgrade as soon as possible. We had uh, seven different security releases during 2016. Um, the, the lion's share of those were OpenSSL, but you know, it makes OpenSSL look bad, but most of them didn't impact Node because they were older ciphers or things, um, or they just didn't impact things that Node was using. Um, you know, but there were a few in there, and most of them weren't very, very critical at all. Um, HTTP also continues to be a ripe source of um, vulnerabilities in Node Core, um, largely to do with the HTTP spec and, the, and our relaxed handling of it. So that's another thing we're going to be focusing on over time is improving HTTP, tighten it up, make sure that um, we, we stop um, seeing these security issues being uh, coming out. Uh, and lastly, the Node Security Project, as you heard, this is being uh, donated to the Node Foundation by Lyft. Um, we're starting a working group, um, public working group, to talk about how to integrate this into Core. That was into the, the core technical activity. It'll include professionals, including uh, Lyft security, Adam Baldwin and others, um, and other, other people that are just interested in security. Um, so you can go to the, um, down the bottom there, there's a security-wg you can go to and put your name down if this is a topic you're interested in. Um, this group will facilitate 
a healthy ecosystem of security service and, and product providers. It's not there to replace that ecosystem. Um, we expect to see Lyft Security and SNCC and all these other companies that are building products and services around security to thrive, and this is what the working group will focus on, not replacing what they do, just augmenting it. And it'll also bring more rigour to our processes. We don't have our current processes well document, documented, and there are single points of failure in terms of people, um, so we're going to improve that. They're not gonna, this group is not going to be responsible for handling private um, security disclosures, um, so don't sign up expecting to have uh, access to all of these gory details about what those vulnerable to, but it's going to be handling some of the processes there and deciding how we do that. And that's it for me. Um, thanks very much for listening. Um, and thanks for coming to Node Interactive and thanks for the organisers as well who put this together. Over to Mike.